Right, hello. I'm a bit early, just in case it might take a bit longer. We've only got about an hour again. <clears throat> uh, we're doing figurative work, similar to the charcoal acrylic uh, portraits, but uh, a simpler version. And today, you should have the image. If you've not, uh, print it off and have a go afterwards. You can stop the video whenever you want. Hopefully we won't lose it again, like we did the other day. <coughs> so that's just the charcoal acrylic uh, figurative work, which you can do in uh, live classes. Uh, this is similar, but we've got colour underneath, which is what we're doing today, with some colour on gessoed paper, which is acrylic colour. You put it on too thick, you won't be able to lift it off, yeah? Um, again, acrylic colour, painted charcoal, bring out the light bits, okay? Like that, and this is what we're going to be doing on Friday, if anybody's here on Friday, this will be every day, don't know yet. Uh, drippy portraits, because we need to draw the portrait on gesso paper, throw some colour on, and it's good fun, but we can do it upright, so you don't have to bother about uh, anything else. But the colour, no charcoal, how's that? Anyway, today you've got gesso paper, and I've put my glasses on, forgot where they are. Gesso paper, just to see the image, that is. And then um, we put some colour on, so we've got burnt sienna, burnt sienna, alizarine, and ultramarine blue. Doesn't really matter what colour you use. What you're going to see is the, the colour is going to come through when you start to rub out the charcoal. We do the same thing as what we did uh, yesterday. Uh, and we cover the whole thing with willow. Some people have been doing it with compressed. Don't use compressed. It's actually harder to remove. It's a lot blacker when you when you glaze it. So you don't really want that. Willow is just nice and fine, and you can rub it off and blend it, and you get a nice finer kind of tonal value without being too rough. I know some charcoals are different, some are darker than others, but uh, keep it nice and blendy. Uh, you'll get rid of a few sticks, try and find the chunky ones, rather than using thin sticks, yeah, like this. Uh, you'll see on my website I've got a PayPal thing as well, if anybody wants to make a donation to my Starving Artist Fund. You don't have to do it, because I'm doing it for my classes as well. Uh, I know if you pay for classes, we've still got those to come, so you, you're not going to lose out. But if you wanted to keep me going in materials or whatever, and my time, then that's good. Some of the people who donated, thank you very much. And uh, like I said, it doesn't really matter if you don't want to, but it would be nice. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't want to start charging people a set fee. You know, unless I really start starving and I have to start making my own bread and whatever. Uh, <laughs> so at this point, Lynn starts, Lynn starts making her own bread. So that's all we're doing, we're knocking back the colour, okay? Um, you're knocking all the colour back and you can still see it. So you're just getting a nice grey tone. Don't fix that by the way because you want to be able to remove it, okay? And we have to draw the image first. So because it's a figure, we have to kind of start with the, um, the uh, drawing and the measuring and that will help you with um, your composition. Uh, so the first thing, if she was sat in front of you, you'd be doing it with uh, a stay like, with a bit of charcoal measuring the head. One, two, three, four, four and a half, say, to the bottom of the picture. Just to make sure you can get this figure on your picture. Okay, on your piece of paper. And the first thing we do is draw an egg because that is going to be top right hand corner near enough because it's just off centre, that's the centre, yeah? So you're just off centre where her head's going to be. And if you draw an egg and then go on, two, three, four and a half. So if I say them to there, I should have plenty of space, plenty of room to get the head on, okay? And what we usually do, you can block in the hair because it's quite dark, so just, this is the beauty of charcoal as well, you can just blend it. Uh, and you've got darker tones and we're going to use compressed as well afterwards and then from that shape we look at the angle of the back and now from a neck you're going to get this lovely curve that comes down here what we do is use the negative space 
at the side of the paper, which is this bit, if you can see it, because that is the shape for my back up to that left hand shoulder. So from the neck, you're getting a curve, and then it's coming down, it's going flat, and then it starts to go curved again. So that's the kind of shape of the back. And if you look about one head, uh, two heads, you're getting the elbow, which is about here. So the elbow and the other arm is just protruding like that. Okay, simple negative space. So by doing that, I've got all the backing. Yeah, and then all I have to do is position her on this plinth because it's a statue actually. I think it might have been more we took at the walker. I'm not too sure where we got the image from. Um, and then we do it like a stick figure. So we, have, if you put circles where all the joints are, I find it much easier because you just join up the joints then. So because you've got the neck and then from the neck you go into a, a shoulder and a shoulder gives you this lovely kind of shape between the hand there and uh, the inside of the hand, which is all just the kind of spade shape and then the shoulder. So you're coming from the neck down to the shoulder and that's all you can see there, right? So then from here, you've got far shortening. So if you look at the size again, one, two and a half, so it's one, uh, one, sorry, two and a half is actually where that elbow is gonna be, which is on her leg. Now it might be a, a little bit difficult to kind of work out where things are at this moment in time because she is in a kind of funny pose uh, but we've got a lovely negative space there between her, her arm and the, the other leg so she's got her elbow on the leg that's furthest away from you actually so that is the elbow on the leg which is casting a shadow that direction like that yeah you can put these in they link things together and then the front of her knee on that leg is there which is this bit and that again is a negative space over here so if you get the shapes of that right you're drawing over that so the knee bony knees usually and then this leg coming from the hip so the hip is going to be here like that at the top of the leg and it's again if you can measure it one two three it's about three heads so if we go one two three that's that line put the hip in and then from the hip there we're going in that direction straight across and the leg is coming out like that leaving a lovely shadow on the floor and then you're coming this way and as you get to about just below the body that's where the foot you just see a big toe coming out and the other foot which is just a shape like that so that's all you need to put in and then the angle of the body because she's seated and the, the her back and her other hip is going away from you so this would be the backbone that would be the, uh, the thing that I always forget the name, Stuart, what is it? The back of your, the, uh, the top of the coccyx. Oh, yeah. And that would be, uh, a bum would be actually, but you can't see it because it's a statue. And then here we've got a negative space again, which joins up from there and goes into uh, the front. And the top of a leg here, you can just see in the background. So that little bit there is a negative space. It's the shape between a breast, a torso, and her arm, which is really interesting. And that also creates a negative space there. Can you see? Uh, because it's uh, charcoal, again, we can blend areas. Uh, it's tactile stuff. You just blend it with your finger. Don't press on as much. You get nice, subtle changes in tone. And we've got the figure seated here. Uh, the front of the knee, keep it nice and angular. Like angular myrtle. Uh, keep that nice angle coming that direction, which actually is a shadow on this plinth, because she's sat on a plinth, and that's the front of the plinth, actually, something like that. But you don't have to put that in, it's just there. And this is where she's seated. So actually, uh, a thigh, which is the biggest muscle in your body, and it's quite big, yeah, so you want that to be big. And it is going kind of an angle, and the, the light is going to be catching there. You've got a nice light uh, shadow, which is coming all down the side of the figure there. Again, just make that a little bit darker, like that. And then I'm going to use a tissue, rubber, and we're going to bring out the, the, the shape and the contrast and the tonal values, uh, the muscle tone, uh, which gives you the shape of the muscles and what have you. Uh, 
Carrascuro effect, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, my brain's not working today, I don't know why. And I hope you're keeping well and busy. I'm going stir crazy actually. But um, I've got a nice shadow there as well between the background. But I keep him painting, so that's uh, nice. keeps you occupied. And the weather's lovely here, you can sit in the garden with a beer and another mm. glass of wine. I'm still waiting for my wine coming, but it's not here yet, which is a pain. Anyway, there you go, and that's the shape. So this shoulder is actually quite light because it's coming towards you. And on the back there, we also get a shadow. You can just see it going across because the light's coming from this direction. So her hair and the curls in her hair are catching the light. You've got the neck and you've got the shadow coming from that shoulder. And then the hand is in shadow as well. So you don't really have to do much there because it's just that kind of shape, isn't it? Okay, and then I use a bit of tissue kitchen roll, anything will do. Like I said, you don't have to try and keep up. And we're just going to rub out again where the light is. Yeah. Now you're going to rub out and you're going to find that you're going to go up to the colour underneath. And that is the idea. And if you put it on thin enough, you know, I was looking at ways of doing kind of simple, simplified uh, ways of painting. Even the negative space there under the knee is uh, an interesting shape. Okay. So you need that as well. And this blends into the rest of the leg and you'll also get reflected lights and there's a nice light on her feet as well and a big toe and whatever. But they're just shaped. Uh, so at the top of the shoulder there, I'm keeping the cool in the background by the way because uh, you can actually turn upside down, it doesn't really matter. And then on the shoulder there, it's quite light. Uh, you've got your shoulder blade and that's coming across the figure. A little bit of light over the. You can't see the backbone. You can't see uh, where the, it changes, but you can see the reflected light there and coming down to the back of us here. Like that. So um, the light there and on the torso at the back where you get that flat shape and that's about all you need to um, to start putting in the rubber. Uh, rubber the highlights, I should say, with the rubber. Okay. <coughs> We're not bothering her hair because it's a bit too uh, thin. So you got a nice, one of the hard rubbers, you know? One of these lovely hard rubbers that give you this really strong uh, hard shape. If you break them in half, you can get these really nice uh, lines and so you just cut them in half and you can do things like that. You can make a hair, you know, scumble. Uh, we're gonna fix this with some air spray again. Uh, I don't have mentioned last time we use air spray because uh, uh, we don't want fixative, it's too good at its job and it makes it waterproof. And we don't want it to be waterproof, I want it to run a little bit and destroy it. Okay, and we also get some reflected light, so it goes a little bit lighter there. This is where the um, shoulder blades are going to be. Uh, that curves around just into the front of the arm, like that. And we also get a little bit of light on the front of the arm, which is that. And then we're getting reflected lights underneath just at the back of her arm, like that. And then where she, the elbow hits the other leg, we're getting that really nice light, which is a shape like that. And then from her elbow, great band by the way, um, we're getting this light on the knee. So if we rub out that little section there, that's actually the knee on the other side of the figure. Yeah, keep up, you'll be all right. And then we take this light, which is coming from the leg, into the hip, all across the leg, like that. So we use the side of the rubber. And as it goes into the middle and towards the end where the, the knee's gonna be, which is kind of in that direction. Doesn't matter if it's not too long because you, know, you wanna get it on the paper and you'll, if you make it too long, it might go off the picture. So, and you can give a short legs as well as long legs, it's up to you what you do. But as long as the position is right, it should be all right. And this is our negative space, which is the plinth, part of the plinth, plinth on the knee, so we can use that as part of the picture, that's the main thing. And when we start using a cloth, when we fixed it, and we're going to go back into it with uh, compressed charcoal to really darken it, and we're going to go back into it with um, paint, because we're going to glaze it, okay? Uh, so, again, big toe, just there, coming out, and then, you know, just count the toes, don't give it too many. But you've just got light shapes actually, so you don't have to uh, make them too obvious, but it's just the shape. 
and that gives you the light again on the plinth which is the which is where she's sitting um, because like I said before she's sitting in that direction so the hips are going that way the shoulders are going that way everything's going away from you all right the back of her arm is a little bit lighter as it comes out from there uh, it actually disappears and then it comes lighter where the back is okay um, and the hand you've got a little bit of light at the front of the hand or the back of the hand and then you can see a thumb and a negative space in between so we can use the uh, we can use the compressed charcoal to put that back in. You've got a little bit of reflected light here. We can use the tissue again. From So the light hitting a leg is reflected into the figure here. So it goes darker actually in the middle. Yeah? So it's like the apple effect. You always get a darker area in the middle of the apple and then you get reflected lights on the other side. A little bit of tip there. Uh, for those who do still lives, and then these lovely lights coming all the way down. So that's the warmth from the figure, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> and then moving on from that, I'm going to drive with some compressed just to reinforce. So if I stand back, look at the picture, am I still going? Yeah. No it's crashing. It's interrupted for a second and then it's come back. Right. It's okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Alright, just keep it. <laughs> Let me know when it just goes off. Alright. Uh, I'll have to go and start it or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, I've got some compressed here, which is going to reinforce the shapes around her head, for instance. So I can put this in. You can use the compressed just to pick out the background uh, around her hair as well. So that's a nice dark shape. You yeah, can see the difference in compressed. Very, very dark. Uh, the back of her neck, which is a curve like that, and goes into the background as well and disappears. And then the front of the shoulder, here, which blends into that area. And then the back of her arm, her hand, sorry, and the negative space just between the fingers, or the thumb and the fingers, which is there. Um, and the top of that hand as well. So just a little bit of dark in that area to bring out the edge and the knee. So this is a nice negative there. Blend it. If you put a lot of compressed on, when you glaze it, it's going to run like mine, like I said before, uh, but we're just reinforcing where the figure is. So this, the bit under the arm, like that, and then back of that other leg, which is there. So that's your negative space, brings out the arm, that's foreshortening. Okay, so don't worry about that, you think, oh, she's only got thin out, little arms, but that's what happens when it's foreshortened, because it's going away from you. So you've got a little bit more dark, just here, where the rib cage is, actually, like that. Okay? And then I'll just reinforce the foot because it's quite dark there and you're getting a nice negative shape here. Um, and then the foot itself is casting a shadow down uh, onto here. So you're getting this nice. So these shadows position things. You look out for them all the time. We need them. All right? uh, you can just see the back of a leg there and then this is the thigh. So that's the calf muscle. Uh, but keep the knees kind of slightly bony at the front. Uh, we can reinforce that arm and go a little bit darker in the background as well here. Um, if you don't like any mucky, uh, fingers mucky, just get a tissue and blend that with a tissue. Okay? Uh, rub it into the paper. Yeah? You get a nice soft uh, tone as well. Um, sometimes you get, it's nice to have a bit of a line or a drawing taking you into places. But a lot of the time I want to keep the shapes uh, kind of... Uh, soft, especially if it's a figure. Okay, so this is where, like I said, she's sitting on this plinth. Uh, the plinth is going in this direction, curving and going that way. So you can have a line there, you can just draw a line so that she's on the floor there, so that's what she's seated on. That's the main thing. And then in the background, we've got all sorts going on, but it doesn't really matter about that. You can just uh, take it off later, can't you? All right, just reinforce this knee, because that's uh, a little bit more of a curve. And then the top of this leg is actually there. So if I use a rubber to go a little bit lighter, have I used the rubber yet? Oh, no. To go a little bit lighter on a leg here because I want more light there, that's it. And then that blends in to the shadowy bit. So when I rub that out with um, the cloth, I'll get a really nice highlight there because I'll go back to, through the paper into the white 
of the gesso underneath and that's why the gesso is important because you want to keep that lovely <coughs> I like oh yeah. Uh -oh. yeah that's the side of the arm and that's the front of the arm you can change things a lot later all the time you don't have to worry about it just have a look through here yeah it's good warm. nice and warm fix it again I'm going to speed it up with a hair dryer so we always use the head as a constant when you're doing figure drawing because everybody says it's similar it's an egg shape an egg shape and then we use the hair dryer to dry off the charcoal uh, dry off the air sp um, spray sorry We are looking for happy accident, so when we put the colour on underneath, we let it run and drip and things, it looks like she got varicose veins or whatever, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can create an accident and uh, it looks like you've done it on purpose, but the other thing is you haven't, so that's quite interesting. Yeah. Again, dry it off, touch the charcoal, so just dry it off, touch the compressed charcoal first, see if it comes off. Make sure you've got a clean finger, so a damp cloth that you use. Dry your finger up and just touch it. Uh, if it doesn't come off, there's a bit of a blending see. It's not too bad, but I'll leave it. Um, and around the feet, whatever, lying on the floor, um, and then the back here, yeah, um, the head, whatever. It's lovely. That's okay. And because we're glazing it and the colour already on, it doesn't really matter what colour we use. We're using plenty of water again. I've got my white pastel and my black compressed charcoal or black pastel, damp cloth, spray. You can use a bit of warm sienna again uh, just to keep it on the warm side and then we can work back in the background. Could use two colours if you want, but I'll just stick to one for the moment. Again, we mix some water with bird sienna. Uh, the bird sienna is Galleria, uh, Winsor Newton Galleria acrylic, okay? Um, we're going to mix a lot of water with that because like I said it's not really the colour although it will warm it up so if I use yellow over here it would probably go green like it did on my other one but we can change that later so I'm going to go straight down the picture make sure you get the figure kind of first we don't want a lot of runs in the figure uh, and the background is not that important uh, you can have runs there or you can miss bits or whatever you know. The rule is, um, as long as you've fixed it and you don't keep scrubbing, like I'm doing now, uh, you're going to just take more charcoal off. Let it run, let it drip, and that will knock the whole painting back. That's the idea behind the whole concept. You, if you're doing it in oils, you've been knocking it back with oil paint. But because we can use acrylics, it dries within seconds, minutes. So we can use a hair dryer to dry it off, like that and keep a few of the runs and the drips. I mean, if it's a plinth, you can add some water and have some texture. It also, if you've noticed, brings out the colour because that's what would happen if you use um, varnish over top, when you use varnish, the water-based varnish, and it might be a bit shiny, I don't know, because of the water. Anyway, dry it off again. <laughs> Why it's getting hot in here? Mm. That's the sauna. We're doing it with shorts on in a couple of months. And it gets really hot. It's got a hair stuck to the back. Let's take that off. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. <laughs> so you get halfway through a demo and you think, oh, I've lost me again, and then uh, people are going to lose it. Uh, Reg is watching. Well, it's not Reg, it's uh, Yvonne. Yeah. Um, anyway, if we can hear my own voice from the, from the, the uh, iPhone, it's because it's not recording it. 
So here we go with uh, a damp cloth. So you just get an old damp disc cloth, yeah? That's what happens when the gesso's, uh, when you rub out because it's like sandpaper, so you get holes in it, you get a holy cloth. You don't want it too wet, you just want it to be damp. Okay, and if we start up here, it's in the finger. So where I've put the highlights, we can start uh, the light hitting the head, or the hair, uh, things like that, especially at the top. So it's a bit lighter there. We can use glazes to put in colour. So don't worry if it's, you know, she's got blue hair, she had a blue rinse or whatever. It doesn't really matter. So where I've used the rubber to enforce where the position of the hand is, for instance, I can just rub out the light there and that becomes more obvious. And as I use the cloth, I'm going back to the white gesso underneath, as, as well as the colour in the picture. So because I've got reflected lights here, um, they're not actually very dark. They've got reflections going across a back there, up into the back of the neck. So that's a reflected light. And then it goes a little bit darker there. And then as you get to this shoulder, you get the nice body part <laughs> of the shoulder. And then from the around the leg. Um, uh, the shadow which is behind the elbow uh, so bringing that knee out again going very very light a reflected shape there there's more of a highlight here on the back which is in that direction and then this side of the shoulder is just catching a little bit more light as it comes down to there okay um, a little Reflected light, like I said, not too bright, but nice and uh, not, uh, not as strong as a highlight. Uh, where the top of the shoulder blade is, the back of the back, back of the arm. And we can actually blend that in slightly so it disappears uh, into the background. And then that angle for the hip goes into the, uh, and then the side of the figure, which is a reflection now, all the way down to the leg. So when you get to here, it's a lot lighter. So you need to press on more. This is where the light's kept in the top of the thigh. And it's also this negative shape on the other leg. It's giving that lovely highlight, which comes in front of that one. So it's a similar tone. <coughs> And then you get to the knee. Luckily enough, the knees are red. Uh, and then in the middle, about here, it's very, very light. So I want to really rub off uh, the paint and go back to the gesso underneath to give me that highlight. And curve it around there, like that, where the leg is. And then the shape of like that and the shadow and then the floor you can use the floor as well if it's getting more difficult to remove we just take the light off right. yeah, this is gone now um, we've got a nice shadow from the foot again so this is the floor actually you've got a lovely light on the floor and then as you get to this foot that's the plinth. Yeah. Here we've got the shape of a uh, buttock, like that, which is giving that lovely kind of soft area. So this is where it, this technique comes into its own really, because you can do these really nice uh, shapes. As where she's leaning, where she's kneeling, or the weight is on the uh, foot there, you will get the bulge of the skin and the muscle, and it makes the um, Top of the muscle stand out a bit. Like that. Alright, people see in the commentary. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, I won't be, I'm not doing it here again, it'll be somewhere else. It's ridiculous, like looking in there. Anyway, the hip and the back. 
for there you get a flat shape like that and you've got two muscles at the side of your back with the size of your vertebrae and it cuts the light like I said you can't really see uh, much of them because they're a similar tone and the only highlight we've got there and the only kind of reflected light just a change in tone there and then this is the muscle coming from the back so that's where it goes a little bit darker and then it uh, blends into that shape this goes up into the back again we get that really nice light there uh, <coughs> coming down here into a leg yeah. um, this area we know it's um, a nice soft blend where this skin is getting a reflection we get a big dimple there because that's where we get this little area where it's slightly darker so I'm just going around that slightly and um, the light on the floor the light on the floor is going to uh, really bring out this where she's seated that's that area Stand back. Um, again, we're going to use some more compressed charcoal to redraw and whatever colour we want to glaze with. <coughs> Every time you use charcoal, you have to fix it again. Uh, it's a little bit lighter there. Uh, squint. Very subtle changes in tone. So I'm just taking a little bit more off as I go across the back into the background there because I got a really nice highlight on the muscle and then it blends into the rest of the back there. Okay, back's not easy to do because you've not got much uh, in changing tone or bone structure there. It's just muscular shape. Um, again, that's the hip. So that's going to be one of the latest parts of your picture. Like that. Okay, I'll just do a tour. So I've got the part of the foot. I've got the toe coming out, which is catching the light. You see? That's all it is. A couple of little toes inside of it. You don't have to do them all, like I said. That's really just a shape like that. And then it comes around and then it goes a little bit lighter then and that's about it. I'll redraw that uh, to bring it out a bit more. Just like that. And you've got some weight on there where the highlights are, so it's um and the highlight then. Stand back. Take a picture. <clears throat> lots and lots of warmth. It's more light here on the back, I think. And then that's blending in to where the shoulder blade is. I had to keep that shadowy part coming across from that direction. So here's some more compressed. It's, it is black pastel very strong dark okay uh, we can redraw little areas if you think the shapes are wrong as well just to emphasize something uh, you can see how it brings out the light areas around it uh, the back of that leg like that, the back of the arm you can put in the uh, elbow and the front of the arm which comes down to a knee. You don't have to blend it in, you can just leave a line, the lines are quite interesting. Uh, we've got a shadow here, uh, giving it like a triangle shape, which is quite interesting. As it comes down to the top of the leg, and then this is the shadow from her elbow. 
Nice interesting shape. And then that's the top of the other leg. And leave that as a shape. This is where the, the uh, thigh, the uh, calf muscle just underneath and the thigh muscle meet to give you that shape. You can just about see it. And then the shadow. Still on. Coming up. Eh? It's still on. You're all right. Uh, good. I get so stressed out with these things, I don't know why. I can stand in front of a class full of people you know that I'm live and talk. And when I'm online, I'm worried about people coming in, I'm worried about people bothering, noises outside, all sorts of things. So it's like really stressful, so I guess I swear. And again, so I'm sorry about that. Um, what happened again? <laughs> it's, really, it's really, really stressful. So the shape around the toe and the shadow from big tall like this. I should have kept my studio actually, it, uh, I could have gone there, got away from everybody. Um, I think I'm going to have to start looking again. Uh, the back where she's seated, you're going to get a very strong like, a, a very strong kind of shadow there because you want the weight, you've got the weight of the figure on that plinth. Uh, I'm quite happy with the shape of the plinth, I'm not going to kind of uh, do much to it. Plint actually stops there and then you get another light, but you can have all sorts of things going on in the background and it's not that important. Um, I'm using the compressed charcoal to black in, block in an area at the back of the head or bring it a dark area. So I re redraw the front at the back of the hand, like that. Uh, the bit in between the thumb and the shape of the thumb there. Uh, the top, so anywhere there you've got a really strong light, uh, you can emphasize it by putting a very strong dirt there, can't you? Like that. Um, so that's kind of redrawing, but we don't, I don't want to do too much um, at the back because I don't want that to compete. But I will bring out that arm um, a little bit just, like, just to make it a little bit darker, okay? And the shape of her hair as well, which is like that, and these little uh, curls she's got. Uh, it's quite dark. You can just see her face actually on, on my picture. Have you ever look? Well, I'm not doing anything like that. So. The neck and the shadow behind the neck. Things like that. Okay, nice and interesting. I'll just emphasize that bit of the shadow. So we uh, bring out the top of the leg. Um, and really, it's about leaving it actually. Beautiful. Yeah. About uh, leaving it and then um, adding some pastel. So I'm going to add. Got half an hour to go, more or less, nearly, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So if you add pastel at this stage, you don't have to add pastel. You just carry on rubbing out the light bits, if you like, <laughs> just to blend things. But if you see that you see the highlights on things, so especially like the top of a the shoulder there, if you use a lot of pastel, you're going to cover up a lot of the picture, a lot of the lights that you've rubbed out, because that... We're actually using uh, transparent colour, you see, and the pastel's opaque, so what you get is uh, a flat shape. I've said this before, but uh, it covers up that transparency, so you don't want it to do that. I can just see the light catching her hand, uh, the bit there where I've got down the arm, because that's getting kind a of reflection from that side, that side. There's a little bit on her leg, which is where the light's catching it there, going into the knee, because you've got bony bone knees, haven't you? Uh -huh. Everybody's got bony knees. Um, there's a lovely light area where you want to just emphasise that little triangle shape to give you the, the shape between the shadow. However, you do it too much, you just blend it again and get rid of it. Uh, we can use the top of a leg, like that. and then we can use the sh again the, the light on a knee, the and the light in the middle of the leg because that's where the highlight's going to be. And then from here, it goes into that hip. Okay, um, at the back you might have a reflected light which just brings out that shape. Uh, the light on the hair, at the back of the hair which is a reflection and uh, the back of the neck. Uh, the back of the neck is actually lighter there and then the hair covers it there. Really. So it goes lighter slightly and then it goes in that direction. Uh, so there's a bit of a shadow. So that's where the light is coming from casting a shadow across her shoulder and some of her hair there. A 
toe, you've got a crease in a big toe where the ball is, and then on the tip of the toe, on the edge of the toe, I should say, a big toe. Uh, like I said, make sure you count them, don't give it too many. Uh, and just, you don't like it, but don't do them all, I don't think you should do them. Sometimes I do a lot of the background with the, the white, because it will emphasize the shape, so you can, but then again, I don't want it to um, distract from the colours underneath, so. You could use pastel at this stage, pastel's quite nice to go over this, and I can just blend that arm in a bit, so it disappears, and just keeps a little bit of light, <coughs> And then, um, the back of the cup here, so whatever, it goes a little bit lighter there, that's where you get a flat area. Uh, yeah, I'm just adding or taking away, it's entirely up to you. Again, if you want to put more light on the floor, just wet it first. Uh, you get a nice shape here, actually, and splatter, for, so you can get some bits that look like um, uh, rock, or plinth, or whatever, some mug, anything. Just a bit of texture. And I'm going to fix it. Uh, might varnish it. <laughs> and then call it a day. So yeah, a lot of light there. Nice textures where the water's been. And run. Like that. That's going into the background. So we can let that disappear. Into the background. Yeah. And uh, keep that lighter, if you like. And let that disappear around your figure. So it's like, um, could have a line there. Like I said, we could uh, bring out that shape again. Just a bit of it, or most of it, since I look to you. <laughs> the thing is, if you don't like anything, you can change it. Uh, so just in between the toes, or uh, whatever. This is where you start doing too much detail and the shape of the hair and the top of the head's quite dirt there. That's somebody moving house upstairs, don't worry about it. And things like that. Again, damp cloth. Across the back, you start to see when it dries that uh, some areas are not as bright as they thought you could do it. So then we can start using the cloth again to go back to your white gesso. <coughs> and I could fix that and warm it up, warm the figure up. You could use the same colours, the sienna, uh, if you like. It's up to you, it's up to you. So just go over it like that. I don't have to, because I'm only doing a bit, I don't have to spray it on. I can just let that run a bit and let it blend a bit. Uh, book it into the background, whatever. <laughs> blend up there. Take some drips off. Um, if you wanted to add texture in the background, just splatter. Again, watch your ceiling and your wallpaper, let it run a bit, don't let it run into the figure, you can help it, you don't want it runs. And um, when you take the paint off, when you take the water off, you're going to end up with the lovely marks like there, see, so that's the light, that's the water creating these textures which look like uh, stone actually, which is quite interesting. Uh, take the light off here, so that's your drips. All right, now then you can go and do a job. Thank you. And get the light off here. So that's some of the runs then in the background. Give you a nice texture. You can also use a different colour. So if I want to use a bit of uh, whatever, green. If you varnish it, you'll seal it, but then again, you don't have to do it. You can just carry on going over it with uh, different tones, different colours. A bit of green works well. 
That's the way this is fellow green. Uh, I can go over here if you want. The green <laughs> against the red as well, which is quite nice. That's complimentary. <laughs> um, we don't want it to run too much into the figure. Let that dry. If you put it down, you can let it dry and uh, work back into it again. Alright, and it's quite wet now, so I'm going to dry it off, take the tape off, and then see if you soften with your brush as well. Nice soft areas. And then when it's finished, if you don't want to do anything else to it, you can varnish it with a water based varnish. Alright, um, cloth, that's what I'm looking for. A bit more light here because you can see where the shoulder blade is just catching more light there as it comes from the shoulder and then blends into the back. So I can put a bit more light there after, or we can just use this. Moving out, again, keep squinting. That comes into her arm a bit. Uh, there's a reflected light in the back of her arm. There. That goes into the figure. And like that. Fabulous sculpture. I don't know who's did it. I uh, need to check up on these things. It's an image I've had for ages. Um, just use it in class. Now and again. Uh, much better than paying models, but if you use models, the same principle, using models, live class, really interesting. Squint, I keep saying squint, but you have to keep squinting. And stand back. Uh, um, Scumble, scumble, rub out bits, enforce bits, uh, a bit more dark if you need to, just to bring out, so this is black again, bringing out that negative. This just brings out the front of the arm, the muscle, the shoulder, a hair, make a hair a bit wider there, you want to. And then that finger, so you got this finger going into the hand. Right there. So that's the bit where you can do as little or as much detail as you want. Because you can, but I just think the better, the less you do, the better. Yeah. So I can just do another one. Because one or two is less than an hour, isn't it? And if you're all keeping up, I hope so. Um, more light off of her, I think, because at the top here so because it's wet it'll come off easier like that. this is why your gesso is important because it's all of the base you will be back to plastic i know it's not good for the environment but we don't throw it in the water or the sea we look at it on the wall and because it's the oil painting technique of glazing we can do it with acrylics like i said very 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 quickly like that. Yeah. Blend that into the shadows and then that's the elbow. Let the figure disappear over that way. You can have, take a little bit more off. Get rid of the lines sometimes, it helps quite a bit. So you don't have a line between the background and where the back finishes and things like that. Uh, the light here on the side of the figure. The right create that like, carrascuro effect, that lovely light <laughs> around them, catching the muscle and little areas that get reflections and other things. Okay. That's about it. That's about it. Um, it's quarter two. So any questions? You can ask me online. I'll try and answer them. <coughs> Finish with 
the pure white again we're going to fix it now just not too much not too much pure white don't cover everything up all right and um, we can bring out that to light on the top of the thigh there blend it anytime you're not happy with anything just get rid of it Uh, reflector like that on the leg. Negative spares. Blend it. <coughs> Shape on the floor. Around the shadow of the foot. Catching the light on a tool. Zen. More shadow. More highlight. <coughs> edge of that because the light's coming down from that direction uh, this bit and up there quite high up that ok thank you for watching Spray it, again, you can fix it this time if you want to, you're not going to glaze it again. But I'm just using some air spray to fix it. You can use fixative. It's just that when you use fixative, it just because it knocks the weights back. Again, same thing. You're not supposed to fix a, a pastel, a final pastel, but it's not. <coughs> we can still look into it because uh, I haven't varnished this one, so I might just leave it, turn it to the wall, have a look at it. I know it's good Friday this, Friday, so uh, everybody's off, I'll not bother, and I'll wait till uh, next week now, before the next one. Uh, thank you for those who contributed, like I said, and um, let's just take the tape off. I hope you're still there, not crash. So it's just all the paper, let it dry, add some acrylic colour, let it dry, cover it with charcoal and uh, don't fix it because you need it to rub out with a rubber. Get the tape off. Get some clips, proper ones, to hold it up. Let it dry. There you go. Read chapter. Ah, sign it, sign it, date it, think of a number, double it, I don't know, sell it. I'll put it in exhibition. Thank you very much. I'll put the picture of the picture on. I'll take a proper photograph. So, uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care, everybody. And uh, that's it, thank you.